Hi guys, it's me today. I'm here with my mid-month wrap-up for February. I'm actually not super confident that I'll be reading a whole lot in the second month, in the second half of the month, but it just, I know I'm going to be busy these, from now on because school has started again, and if I'm not going to do it, I know I'll regret it at the end of the month. <laughs> so yeah, I have one, two, three, four, five books that I want to talk about and two graphic novels, so let's just get into it. The first book I read in the month of February is People We Know on Vacation by Emily Henry, or You and Me on Vacation, as I own the UK copy, and I gave it this five, five stars. This book follows Poppy and Alex, who met in college, became friends, and then every summer they have been going on these trips together, as like Poppy is like very much into traveling, and she starts like a whole travel blog and stuff because of it, and then two years before the start of this novel they had this huge falling out on one of their trips and they haven't talked ever since and now at the beginning of this novel poppy is working for this like traveling magazine and she has kind of like lost inspiration she feels like she has accomplished everything that she's wanted to accomplish and she just kind of feels lost and kind of thinks back to the last time that she felt really happy and fulfilled with life and that was the last summer that she spent with Alex so she decides to contact him and it's like hey I need to travel for work and how about we just go together because I've missed you and yeah they go on this trip together to hopefully rekindle their friendship and yeah it's an adult romance novel so obviously more happens and I picked this up for my reading recommendations reading vlog, which will be linked above as well as in the description, so you can go check out my thoughts on reading this while I was doing so. I really, really love this book. I read it because of all the hype I've seen of it on BookTube and BookTok, and definitely wasn't disappointed. This is told like a dual timeline where every other chapter we like look at a different summer that they were together starting with the summer that they met and then obviously going up until two summers ago and then we also have the this summer storyline and i really liked how those two storylines were balanced throughout this book i feel like it just it worked really well it gave you this sense of their friendship because of course in the present storyline they aren't friends anymore and having seeing them like starting to be friends and spending all of these summers together it really shows how close you are and how tight you are and it also causes for a lot of scenes in the present storyline where um especially poppy is reminiscing about their friendship as reminiscing about that friendship and how it used to be those moments hit harder because you know how strong the relationship was i also really loved poppy as a main character we only get her perspective in this book and I really loved her, like that whole, like her whole deal is that she doesn't feel accomplished, like she feels like she's accomplished everything in life and now doesn't really know what to do. And I really like that perspective, I feel like often something that's comparable to this that you see a lot is like people who look back to like their aspirations in the past and realize they've accomplished none of that and then are having a crisis on if they are living a good life or not. And I felt like this book, which is kind of like, I have accomplished everything and now I don't know what to do and I'm, I'm not really depressed, but I'm not happy because of it. I really like that as a perspective as well. I feel like that's something I have never read or seen before in any form of media. And I really liked the way that was tackled. And of course, I adore the romance. Alex is a great love interest. I absolutely loved him. And I think the way that their romance was developed, both in past and present, was done really well. And I just, I, I loved it a whole lot. So I would highly recommend this if you haven't read it yet. So yeah, <laughs> those are my thoughts on that book. Then the next book I read is The Rumor Game by Donna Clayton and Sonia Stara Potra, which I gave to the five stars. And as a galley, I got from Negali, but that has yet to come out. And this book... It's a bit hard to explain but basically we have three perspectives three girls one girl has gotten into a situation over the summer and now kind of rumors have made it seem worse than it has and there's a lot of attention on her she's been cyber bullied and stuff like that and she kind of wants to get her normal life back and get the attention off of her now that school is starting again and then we follow this girl who over the summer was sent to a weight loss camp by her parents and now has lost a lot of weight and people are looking at her differently and they have started up rumors that she is hooking up with this guy who is dating someone and then we also follow that girlfriend and basically this deals on how rumors kind of like destroy can destroy someone's life and like the and also that discusses a lot like cyberbullying and bullying just in general 
and yeah i i do still highly recommend this book it is officially marketed as a thriller but i wouldn't call it a thriller because it just isn't really very thriller but officially it is just manage your expectations going into this book once it comes out because it's more just like a high stakes like drama book like think very much like tiny pretty things which is the duology that they wrote it's like very much like on the same veins so or just like very focused on drama between teenagers and yeah i do think that with the right mindset you could enjoy this i personally because there was a lot of great things in here but i personally just didn't really enjoy my time reading it and i review and rate based on my enjoyment and a part of that is just the high insecurity level of all of these main characters which is very understandable and very realistic but just reading it was just a little bit too difficult for me and i generally had to push myself to pick this book up after picking it up putting it down for just like the night or something and then the next day i just had like difficult time pushing myself to pick it up because i knew i was going to be like confronted with like these mindsets that just like very insecure which again makes sense because these girls are all like heavily bullied and heavily scrutinized by the people around them but just it's very difficult to read especially because it doesn't get better with the book if that makes sense like those insecurities are like deeply grounded in them which again is very realistic and makes sense and i do think that it discusses how they came to be there very well but i just it was uncomfortable reading it and that's why i decided to rate it so low but for the rest i do think like this tackles the issues that it wants to tackle pretty well i do think that they that this book accomplished what it tried to accomplish i just it didn't work for me that's it then the next book that i read is tight by holly black which i gave two to five stars to and i got this on the library but i had to return it already so that's why i got a picture on the screen but this is a ya urban fantasy kind of where we follow this girl who when she was a child she like, had these friends that were fae she was the only one that was able to see them and whenever she told people about the stories that she, like the adventure she went on with these fake friends nobody believed her and then she moved away with her mom because her mom like has this dream to be in like, this band and was like moved all over the place to like follow different bands that she could be in and so she moved away and like hasn't been in contact with these fae ever since but now they're back in her hometown and she is kind of like because she's older now she just feels like oh that was just like me being a child like imagining things makes sense but then she actually one night rescues this fae who was tapped and like saves his life and without knowing it that gets her involved in this big fae war and yeah there's much more to it i feel like that synopsis sounds very vague but i feel like this has a very slow start and like the more interesting elements i guess are spoilery so that's why it's such a big synopsis but this takes place in the same world as the cool prince which is immensely popular i feel like that, i believe it's a prequel series that just takes place before that but it's the same world so i was curious about checking this out because i've had the cool prince on my tbr for like the longest time and then these got tweets translated into dutch recently and it was in my library and they're very pretty editions so definitely go check out my tiktok where i show off this book because it's a very pretty edition, but my TikTok is in the description, so go check that out if you want to. I'm very bad at self-promo, so I'm sorry. I quite like this. This is my first Holly Black. I gave it two to five stars because I did have a lot of problems with it. Like I said, like the first half is like extremely slow. Not a lot happens in it. And then once the plot actually starts going, I feel like there's a content worth of like an entire trilogy in there. It just like happens one after the other. So <laughs> there were some issues there. Also, this was written in 2002, I believe, and I feel like that's very much noticeable just from like different comments that i made or just the way things are done and that makes sense it feels a bit dated but it makes sense because like i said it's written in 2002 it's, it's an old book it's almost 20 years old so it makes sense that there are some like dialogue things conversations that feel dated but yeah i did quite like this world though i think this world is very interesting and has a lot of interesting elements to it i also I kind of felt indifferent about the characters really i would say i liked them just because i don't hate them but i'm also just like not really the biggest fan of it but the sequel follows different characters and i'm very excited to check that out as well i read from the library out now as well and yeah i feel difficult like reading this because like reviewing this because eventually i liked a lot of elements about it but I also just had a lot of problems with it, which is why it ended on the two out of five stars. But it was a very quick read. I really liked the writing. It kind of had like this 
fantastical feeling to it. It's not particularly flowery or anything, but just like the way it was told just felt fantastical and I really like that. I'll definitely be picking up a lot more by Holy Black. Like I said, I'm planning on picking up the sequel and a cool pen has been on my TBR forever and it, this has definitely pushed me to check that out. But I just, this book and me just didn't really work that well. Then the next book that I read is Coval by Stephanie Carver, which again, I gave five out of five stars. I love this so much. This one I also read for that reading vlog that I mentioned earlier. And in this book, we basically in this world, there's this game called Coval. And it's like this very magical thing. And there's a lot of like mysteries around it, like what it is exactly, because nobody knows if the magic of it is real or not. And Basically every year it's like in a different place and our main character Scarlet has been writing to Master Legend who is like the inventor of Caraval, like the boss of Caraval. Nobody knows who he is, but she has been sending him letters every year, basically begging him to take Caraval to her hometown because she isn't able to travel anywhere else and she would love to experience Caraval together with his sister. And then at the beginning of this book, she writes one last letter because she is getting engaged like she's getting married she's engaged it it's an arranged marriage she hasn't met her husband yet and it's happening in a couple of weeks and she is just like hey i know i've been bothering you with letters for years now but this is my final chance could you please take care of all to my town so i could experience it because i would love to and legend actually responds for the first time it's like hey this year we're not traveling it's taking place on my private island and here are, are the invitations, because it's invitations only this year. For you, your sister, and your fiancé, I would love to meet all three of you. And she is kind of in a pickle, she doesn't really want to go, but she shows her sister it anyway, and her sister ends up dragging her to it, and they are using the help of this sailor, and this sailor is kind of needing to pretend that he is Scarlett's fiancé, because, you know, the ticket is for the fiancé, not for a random dude. And yeah, Again, a bit of a vague synopsis, and I feel like technically you could say a little bit more about it because I've heard other booktubers describe it as differently, but I just, I kind of want to leave it there because I feel like it's just such a great journey to go on, knowing as little as possible, because I even, even though I've heard a synopsis for this book a million times, like years ago when this first came out, I haven't heard about it for so long, so like the synopsis like left my brain, mostly, so when I started reading this, like everything was like a surprise to me, and I feel like that's just like the best way to read it, just knowing what I just told you, and yeah, I thought this was great. I had a blast reading this book. I've heard very mixed things on this book, which is why it's one of the oldest books in my TBR that I haven't read yet, but I just, I absolutely love this. I just, I love Caraval as like a thing. I feel like the whole mystery around it is so interesting and how the game works is very interesting. And then on top of that, how the magic works or the perceived magic works, because by the end of this book, we still don't know if the magic is real or not. That's something that is left to figure out until, you know, the rest of the series, which makes sense. You know, you don't give away all of your secrets in the first book if you got a trilogy. So yeah, I really loved exploring everything about Caraval and I feel like the magic system or just like the whole game is so different from anything I've read before. Like I also really loved Scarlet as a main character which I know is on a popular opinion because that's the only complaint I have heard across the board from people who love this and people who hate this is that Scarlet is an annoying main character but I loved her. She is a very I would say unconventional main character because she isn't really out for the action. She'd rather just like stay safe and she does everything to keep her and her sister safe and of course like going to Caraval part of that is playing the game. She's very headstrong and I just I really like that. I feel like she again is like very different from any character I've read before because I feel like most of YA fantasy protagonists are much more like Scarlet's sister which also explains why most of the people who read this book enjoy Scarlet's sisters more than Scarlet where Scarlet's sister is really like trying to make changes to her life and like going out there and like fulfilling her dreams well in the meantime Scarlet is like no I just want to keep her safe you know we gotta survive that's also a part of the plan and I actually quite like that and then there's also just a great moment in here that I don't want to dwell on too much <laughs> But I really loved it. It is a bit insult of it because this book takes place over five days. So technically it is in cell of, but I just feel like the way it is written and how it was done just was really well done. I really liked the tension between Scarlet and Elementress. I thought that was done amazingly. And on top of that, 
there's just a lot of twists and turns in his books that are absolutely wild and I didn't see coming and I absolutely loved my time reading this book and then we only have two graphic novels left and the first one of those is Watch Day Diaries by Jamila Roser and Robin Smith which I gave two or five stars to and is a gallery from that gallery again this one has yet to come out but I would just in a bit of a reading slump a little bit and I just I wanted to read some graphic novels and I had to on my Nagali shelf so I decided to read them. This is the first one and in this one we follow I believe it's five friends kind of like on the day that they take care of their hair. They wash their hair which is why it's called Wash Day Diaries and it follows kind of like a little bit of like their personal stuff as well and yeah I gave it a five stars because I just feel like this could have gone a little bit more in depth which i know feels weird to say for a graphic novel because yeah because you got less time to like discuss things and in a book but i just i feel like this was very surface level and i would have liked a little bit more of it i also feel like in the beginning this is very confusing and a hard time kind of like distinguishing the different characters of course like when you see them it's very easy but you don't there's like a part of this is told like text messages and you only see one of the girls and it was very difficult to me because it was very much at the beginning i didn't have their names like separated yet so it was very difficult to say to see which person was saying what and like remember all of that so yeah i just kind of felt meh about this and then the last graphic novel i have and then also the last thing i have for you today is good game well played by rachel smith and katherine lobo which i gave two to five stars and is an gallery from that gallery that hasn't come out yet and this one it's a bit difficult to explain because basically we start in 2009 where this woman is on this plane and she basically explains like oh i'm going home because one of the people that i used to like work with in this um, gaming store when I was a kid passed and I'm going home for his funeral and then we flash back to 2000, 1999 when she was working in this store and basically the store is not getting as much revenue as the bosses would like so they're on the verge of closing and basically our cast of characters I guess a group of friends had like decide to like come together and kind of try and save this store and yeah i feel like if this was just a 1999 plotline i would have loved this if that was just like fleshed out a bit more i think this would have been amazing but instead we also got the 2009 parts and i just i didn't like it i know i explained that terribly but i didn't know how to explain properly without spoilers so yeah that is all I have for today. I hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know in the comments below if you've read any of these books or you've taught it to myself some of the books you read so far in February. And I guess I'll see you guys next time. Good. Bye.